Welcome to my channel. This is today's episode of Daily News Clips. Before we get into that, thank you for coming to my channel. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for watching my videos. And thank you most of all for commenting. I really do enjoy the comments. I have several items on the news agenda today. The first one is a uh, article in on Racket titled The First Amendment Takes a Beating in the Supreme Court. I talked about this yesterday, but um, <clears throat> this is uh, written by Matt Taibbi, and he brings up a good point, which I want to read for you because it's I had the thought when I was thinking about it, and so I highlighted this section. Um, he says... Late in oral arguments yesterday during the Murty v. Missouri censorship case before the Supreme Court, newest Justice Katanji Brown Jackson interrogated J. Benjamin uh, Aguinaga, Solicitor General of Louisiana. Jackson, so my biggest concern is that your view has the First Amendment hamstringing the government in significant ways in the most important time periods. Can you help me? Because I'm really, I'm really worried about that because you've got the First Amendment operating in an environment of threatening circumstances from the government's perspective, and you're saying that the government isn't, can't, uh, let me make this bigger, can't interact with the source of those problems. Can you help me? Yes. I would love to help you, Justice Jackson, to a less challenging line of work, hamstringing the government. Good God. That's the line that stood out to me. <laughs> Justice Jackson's view of the First Amendment is that it hamstrings the government. Well, uh, that's the truth. That is the truth. That was the design of the First Amendment, was to hamstring the government, to keep the government from interfering with people's free speech. And the most appalling thing to me is that not one single justice, other than Katanji Brown, said anything. I mean, none of them objected to her comment. None of them questioned it. None of them brought it up. It's just really... Uh, it's scary the way that we're headed. The second article is why government is always the most dangerous source of misinformation. And that's an interesting article that I suggest you read. I, and of course, I always put the links in the description so that you can do that. The next article I have is a Texas woman who was drugged, kidnapped, shot her attacker dead, according to police. Now, you might think I'm bringing this up for one reason, but I'm bringing it up for something else entirely. I read this entire article, and in the end, they say that it's under investigation and they don't really know what happened. So my question is, why are we reporting this? We don't know. I mean, it's perfectly plausible that this woman could be telling the truth, that she was drugged and she was kidnapped. She managed to get a hold of the attacker's gun. She shot him and he died. That's perfectly possible. But it's also possible that he was her lover and she shot him out of anger. And we just don't know that yet. So this is something about news media that really bugs me. They're so anxious to get a story out there, especially if it's uh, controversial like this is, that they don't really care about checking the facts or even knowing what the facts are. Nobody knows what the facts are in this case yet. They have to investigate to find that out. So why are we printing these stories? It makes no sense at all to me. <sighs> the next article that I have for you is one titled Favoritism and Cover-Ups Reveal a Culture of Corruption in the U.S. Capitol Police Leadership. And this one, uh, <laughs> this one is bad. I have to read a little bit of this to you because you won't believe it. Um, 
Internal discipline reports show a pattern of officers failing upward. Proven instances of fraud, forgery, theft, perjury, and drunk driving on duty going back to the late 1990s led to promotions rather than dismissals and prosecutions, discipline reports obtained by Blaze Media show. This article is written by Steve Baker. You may recall I've mentioned Steve Baker several times. He's the journalist who has been uncovering all the lies about the January 6th so-called insurrection and discovering that the narrative that the Democrats produced from their committee is based on falsehoods and uh, uh, ignoring obvious evidence that was to the contrary of what they wanted to say. And now he's been arrested by the FBI and charged with four misdemeanors. And I really think they're trying to intimidate him to keep him from reporting. But to his credit, Steve keeps right on going. High-ranking U.S. CP officials, including a present-day deputy chief and an assistant chief, were implicated and faced discipline and possible termination in a fraudulent overtime pay scheme that defrauded the government of tens of thousands of dollars, according to documents obtained by Blaze Media and a former Capitol Police sergeant. A lieutenant involved in the scam left the Capitol Police and now works for the U.S. Senate Sergeant-at-Arms. You can read this whole article as usual with Steve's articles. They're lengthy and they're full of all kinds of facts and statements of fact and evidence of facts. And this is just one more i got to read to you. The case of Lieutenant John Erickson is far more complex and troubling. By the time of his penalty assessment memorandum, also dated December 18, 2013, Erickson had already been promoted to captain. What makes his eventual ascent to deputy chief confounding to the extreme? The memorandum stated that Captain Erickson is an outstanding employee, but other department officers refer to him as a Teflon John, the source close to the investigation said. Erickson has an especially checkered disciplinary record, yet has somehow managed to continue his ascent in rank and recognition. In July 1997, while working on a detail in San Antonio for then House Speaker Newt Gingrich, Erickson was arrested for on drunk driving charges. Deseret News reported that Erickson was found in a government-rented convertible parked on a roadside at, at 3.25 a.m. with his head on his chest, passed out, extremely intoxicated, according to a police report, which also noted his slurred speech, bloodshot eyes, and a strong breath odor of intoxicants. He refused to take a breath test and was released after spending several hours in jail. He was given a warning and suspended without pay for 10 days. This is the kind of people that are in our law enforcement. That's what we're having to deal with nowadays. And finally, uh, Maine Democrats push totalitarian rebuild of defeated transgender trafficking bill with national implications. This one is really troubling. And I'm going to read you some parts of it because it's... <laughs> Well, you'll see when I read it. Uh, Democrat lawmakers in Maine attempted to pass a radical bill earlier this year that threatened to allow the state to seize custody of children whose parents, both in and outside Maine, refused them sex change modifications and other irreversible medical interventions. Following a successful pressure campaign led by the parental rights advocacy group Courage is a Habit and some mild Republican pushback, the bill, dubbed the Transgender Trafficking Bill by critics, was killed in committee. But they haven't given up. They've created a new bill that's even more terrible than the last bill. So my question to you is, do you think that the government should be able 
any government should be able to take children away from their parents simply because the parents don't want the child to undergo gen gender transition surgery. Do you think that's right? Do you think the government should be able to do that? And hide the location of the child from the parents. The new bill would prohibit interference with abortions or sex change mutilations, protect medical practitioners from lawsuits, and conceal the known whereabouts of interstate child runaways from their parents, among other things. Already, 16 state attorneys general have threatened action against Maine if the bill passes. So, the battles continue. <laughs> uh, when it comes to leftists, it'll always be never-ending battles. It's like they, they insist on pushing the envelope all the time, and there's nothing you can do except just fight them and say no and refuse to cave in. But when people keep electing these people to office, what they're saying is they're perfectly fine with police officers who get drunk being promoted, with governments taking children away from their parents to perform sex change surgeries on them, and abortions without the parents' permission. Mm. <sighs> The world is crazy. The world has gone insane. This is not the world I was raised in, that's for sure. It's not the world that I was living in just 10 years ago. But it is what it is, and I try to keep you informed about it. So, again, I'll put all of these links in the description, and you can follow up on these as you wish. Meanwhile, for you, I pray that you will be an abundant person, that you will live an abundant life, and that you will be healthy, and that you'll live a long time, and that God will keep you safe from harm. I pray he'll do the same for every person that you love. And I pray also that you will be anxious for nothing, but in all things, through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, you'll make your requests known to God. And the peace that passes all understanding will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. This is the Vietnam era vet out.